Good morning everyone. I'm super excited because I got my Oculus Quest yesterday and today I'm going to show you how you can use the component materials. So let me show you what I mean. If I press here I get this radial menu where I can change the materials of this object and with this system you can really do a lot of great stuff but you need to keep some things in mind so let's dive right in with the component material. This is the one where we actually can define the little buttons, but also the materials we want to have for the, for the mesh. So let's start off with the buttons. We create a new one. And here is a list, an enum list, where you can define your own names. We have already created some for you, but this doesn't need actually to be the color that is associated with this. And I'm going to show you what I mean with that. So let's create three buttons, black, white, and uh, an orange one. And here you can define a material for those buttons. They don't need to have the same material. As you can see on the wall example, they are the same material. So you can really see the texture there. But depending on what you want, and you can also see that there's a lot of uh, UV distortions on these meshes. So you could adjust that, or you can just create a plain material that may or may not work better for your solution. So let's get back in there and we select a white material. We select a black one. Let's make a black metal and an orange one. And if I start this now, nothing will happen because the cube doesn't have an actual logic to show the, the menu. So that would be the next thing. First of all, we have to tell this cube that he is selectable. So. Let's go in there and add a component select. Select is enabled, that's good. But under the type, we have to define our selection menu. And for the selection menu, we need another component. Let's type in selection. We have our component selection menu. And here we can define what kind of selection menus do we want. So for example, we could add the, the change material one here. And now if I press on the cube, you can see the menu appears and here's our change material icon. I can press on that. And now you can see I have my three different colors. Let's open up a new element here. And here in the selection menu, we have the same drop down again. And if we want to define the same color, so we have to go in there and create a white one, a black one, and an orange one. Let's do this a white, a black, and an orange one. And let's open the first one up. For each material here, we have to define a map. And the map needs an identifier that's just a tag name. That way the script knows on what match, on what mesh to actually change the material on. So you could have multiple materials here and it would only affect the one with this tag. So we make name the tag cube. Let's select a static mesh, scroll down all the way to tags, component tags. And let's add the tag cube to it. Okay, let's go back in there. We have the right tag, open it up. We could also um, go in there and not even, not only change the material, but also the static mesh or the same works for a skeletal mesh. For example, if you have like a bevel cube or something like this, you could also change it with this system here. If you want to change the whole actor, there is an exchange component that is better suited for this. So this is really just to change this one specific static mesh here. 
but let's concentrate on the materials. So down here we have the possible materials. Let's add one. This is for index zero. If we have meshes with more materials, for example, the, the couch here, we can like you can see it has two materials. So this will also work. But for the cube, we only have this one material. So we only need to define one material here. And we are in the white preset. So let's select our white material. Material white. And let's do the same for the others. Create a new one. And add our tag here, the cube. Add a new material. This was the black one. So we go in there. Black metal was the one we wanted. And last of all for the orange, we add a tag, open it up, add a material and type in orange. And this is everything we have to do in order for the system to work. So let's open it up. We have our three buttons. We can change the material here. We can close it down. One last example I wanted to quickly show you is this. I have one actor. And if I select the material, I can change it to black. And you can immediately see that this is another material than this. Or if I select the class, this one, you can see, yeah, they are both red, but they are totally different materials. Same as for the white material here. In so basic shapes, this may not be necessary, but if you have a 3D character with custom UVs and custom textures, it could totally make sense to use different materials for this section. So this that this character would have another material than this, but they are both in the red style or the black style or the white style. And let me quickly show you how I set this up. Basically, you already know how to do this, but just wanted to make sure if we select the component material again, this was how we set it up the last time. And if we open this up, you can see under maps, I now have two maps. I have the one with the tech cube and the one with the tech sphere. And if we select our sphere, you can see down here, there's the tech sphere. So if I would go in there and type in the tech cube for the sphere and play again, they would once again share the same material. So now they both use the same material. And if I add another component, let's add another sphere and move it to the side. This doesn't have a, a tag, so if we play it, no matter what I select, this will not be affected. As you can see, this is kind of advanced. You can do a really, really a lot of great stuff with that. But I think in most cases, you will be fine using the standard for things like this. And If you really want to experiment with that, you can go in there and change the static mesh or the skeletal mesh. But in this version, there is only, if we change the static mesh, the skeletal mesh will be ignored and also the material will be ignored. So you are only able to change the uh, static meshes with this. We will modify this in future versions of, the, of this component and also rename some things, but I hope you got the main idea of how this whole system works.